Episode 600 for July the 6th, 2022. I'm Stephen Lackey, editor of CultureSmash.tv. Nico? Nicholas Qualls, contributor to CultureSmash.tv. Tina? Tina Qualls, contributor to CultureSmash.tv. Nathan? Nathan Savino, contributor to CultureSmash.tv. Zach? Zach Barton, professional dumbass. All right, so it is You get our... paid for your dumbassery? No, I get paid for my smarts. Does so he? you're not a professional. Well, the, the, you're so you're poor. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Right. So let me get to this point. Um, it is our 600th episode, and yeah. I can only I could really only think of one way for us as a group to celebrate this episode. Are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. No. Is it strippers? It is. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God! Stop! No! Yes, baby! Stop. Yes, baby! No. There they are! No, friends! <laughs> so, Nathan's gonna cry. Look at him! No one. I didn't tell anyone that I, w- I was able to get Dwayne. Bitch, we and talk Mike today. And Catherine back. And we got Mike and Dwayne. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hey, it's the- oh, friend. So real quick, Zach and I prepared for 600. Zach has provided a cake for our 600th episode right here. Do you guys realize that Mike actually put this in my face? That's 12 years. Dang. Oof. So here's to you guys. Awesome friends, Aww. awesome podcast. Aww. I'll drink water here, you I, go. I, I, do not I don't have anything to drink. All I that. have is pep. All I have is Pepsi AC. <laughs> Cheat right. that. That's about right. You might need. Sometimes Sometimes that's that's what what you need. Yeah. <laughs> you your run-up sucks. Yeah. Your run-up sucks. I refuse. I refuse. My God. Yeah, I, would, just... I wouldn't know. It's so, it's so good to see some of you guys. Uh, Dwayne and, and Dwayne, I see all the time. Mike, I see when I can get him out of the cave. <laughs> Catherine, I don't. You didn't know this because we haven't talked about it. Me and Mike have been playing music. (gasps) That's amazing. Me and Mike and and Justin. Oh my goodness, I love that. That's amazing. We've been rocking out. Oh my goodness, where are you all playing? At at their house. We've taken over their living room. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. We're just we're just jamming right now, trying to put together some little. Little set list or something. Would you like some I cake? love that. You want some? Cake? I want some cake. No cake Why right now. I want to buy a cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is this is really funny, uh, Catherine. You you haven't. Uh, okay, wait, do I have sure. one over here? Let me see if I hang on. Let me see if I have one over here. No. Uh, Damn, off script. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not going off script. I'm not going off script. So it, as is tradition, we always have a, a weird in-kind food-based sponsor and some things have not changed, right? So this is what we have right now. Skinny Mix is, is sponsoring the show. So let me hit this ad real quick and then we'll start. Uh, special thanks to Skinny Mixes for supporting the Culture Smash cast. Skinny Mixes are coffee and dessert syrups that are zero sugar, zero calorie, and zero to two carbs. Head on over to SkinnyMixes.com and try some of their syrups, such as white chocolate, salted dark chocolate, salted caramel, and the variety of cocktail mixes they offer, including the margarita mix, which is the one I like. Also, this uh, this one's pretty good, too. Did, did somebody get you a drink? <laughs> yeah, John came in with wine. I love it. So I use a really promo code wonderful husband. Culture Smash gets you 15% discount on our order. What are you drinking now? Wine. <laughs> yeah. Because I have such a great husband. That's, That's spectacular. <laughs> sure oh, I goodness. Should have thought about that. I could have got the peach wine that we have in the freezer. You could have. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do our typical typical stuff here. Our big, our big topic of conversation is going to be Stranger Things. But before we get into it, because we're celebrating 600 episodes, I've made a list of some high points from this the show that I thought I would hit some bullet points. And if you guys have some stories you want to remind us of, that would be great. But this show started in 2010 in the back of Fazoli's restaurant. <laughs> if you guys know what Fazoli's is, it's a fast food Italian place. And they gave us a room for free. Decent and, breadsticks. Yep. Me yep. and Mike and uh, Alan, who isn't here. 
started this thing and we've had a revolving door of people join and come and go. Nico actually is the one who stuck it out first ridiculously. And then, then of course this dumbass over here has stayed with us the whole time. <laughs> the hell else am I supposed to do with my Wednesdays? That's true. That's true. <laughs> it's, it's the thing Obviously that grounds not me KJ. in the week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Some sure she's never change. <sighs> she might be. She, you know what? She gets her free night on the PC to play whatever game she like wants said, without I'm having I'm sure to... she's thankful. Yeah. In fact, like, sometimes... I wasn't being a dick. Sometimes. Kind of. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> when podcast so, is canceled, she's like... She gets mad. She's yeah. Like, I thought you had podcasts. I, I got some Delta 8 and Dead by Daylight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. It is you, fine. I can just sit on the couch with the cats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Catherine and Mike, you guys don't know this, but Zach uh, has a new child. He has another child. Yeah. Oh, another cat? Adopted, I yeah, they adopted a, a second cat. Yeah. Oh, wow. His name is Mochi. He's oh, a little, little black, black kitty. Cat. It's getting Mochi. Aww. Yep. Nico, and, and, Nico didn't pay attention when you first told us, so he's scrolling through like Instagram or something, and he sees another cat. He's like, "Wait, did Zach get another cat?" And I'm like, "Yes, he told yeah. us this last week." That's because we tuned Zach out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it because it, uh, it comes naturally, but he is a terror, or he is a lovable snuggle bug. It's <laughs> no in between. Aww. <laughs> and you know my my cat Kaylee turned ten, and what's epic about Kaylee is uh, Catherine helped me name her. You remember Kaylee you is down- not ten. I yeah, I know. Is. Well, uh, the whole reason I I'm I'm very proud of that she's name 10. because it's mm-hmm. Firefly reference. I it cannot is. believe she's ten. Yeah. Holy. Dude. Yeah. <gasps> Where did we- the time go? That's a full decade. Yeah, I adopted her in 2014, and she was she was two. When we got no, her. No, 2012. <sighs> no, it wasn't 2012, sir. It wasn't. Okay, it was 2014? Yes. So she was two years old. That's what he just yes. said. That's, that's, that's what, what I just said. Oh, See, okay. this is why I'm a professional. <laughs> Did you need another <laughs> shot, sir? I am a <laughs> fucking <laughs> professional dumbass. <laughs> that's true. Some things have not never changed oh, over these years. No this is why I will man. never play D&D with Zach, because he cannot math. That's and this hard. is exactly. why Al Borland was the assistant. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, okay, so I made some notes here. Uh, one of the big things that we have done as a podcast, and this was actually before uh, most of you guys came on board here. This is more of a me and Nico thing and Mike thing, the three of us, is we did a 24-hour podcast That's, early yep. on and that's the one i remember yeah and basically what we did was 24 episodes over like an entire night and that was done in a comic book shop when they used to do these 24-hour comic book creations where people would get together and draw a comic in 24 hours and we did buzz bites was our sponsor at that yeah. point thank god oh god oh, oh man Appro- appropriately yeah. so I miss tina, that. tina made me throw away <laughs> All of my buzz by tents that I kept for like random not all of them, just the ones you weren't actually using. Because all like, eighty six thousand, they're, they're like all Altoid tins, but they're a little bit better. Uh, and I was just using them to store holy them shit. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. and uh, Mike uh, has killed my actually best has buzz bites. No, what? No, yeah, we had those at the same time. The yeah, see, I keep the tin for storage. I think yeah, apparently I Mike does there. too. Apparently, yeah, it, yeah. it wasn't the buzz bites you had to worry about. It's the foosh mints. Oh boy! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like a urinal cake. Those things. Um, Gee, but, Steve, yeah. why are they a sponsor on the show anymore? Because... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, the funny thing is, is we've outlived so many food sponsors because I don't even know if they still exist as a company anymore. To be honest, I think I, they're I'm gone. Pretty sure they are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they kept us awake for 24 hours and each episode we did a different subject. We had, uh, a tattoo artist for an hour. We did the anime convention for an hour. It was, and then we did an urban legends episode, which came, became the thing of urban legends because it disappeared. We were posting the episodes as we recorded them and something happened. It was just gone. Uh, So technically there's only 23 of those episodes and I I don't know what happened. Lost episode. Yeah. Uh, I, I blame Alan Smith for it. I think he was the cause of it. 
Um, Seems like a good place to start. It it does. He's not here, so that's natural. Well, that's the reason I blamed him. It's because he's not here for for this. Yeah, (laughs) I would just like to say that my tolerance for alcohol is so low that I am really feeling that shot. This boy got drunk on two (laughs) twisted tees and was texting me all night. Fuck yeah, I was. (laughs) You got drunk on twisted tees. Zach, I love that you say my alcohol tolerance has gotten so low. When was it ever high? Exactly. No, there was Thank there you. was a point. There was a I, five minute point where I I uh I used to have a drink a week. Yeah. And Big boy. I've had like you crazy. Right? I have seriously had <laughs> <crazy girl. laughs> like, You're no, so no. crazy. The only guy the only guy we know that sips a shot. Yeah. What, what I mean is, like listening to Ned Flanders talk about drinking. <laughs> I have had five drinks this entire year. Well, like, I mean, oh, that's commendable. That. We've Did, seen Twisted Zach, Tea counts, right? We've seen Zach minorly drink, but we've also seen him eat some really weird stuff and pay for it. That's true. <laughs> uh, you're yep. not one to talk, yeah. I was, I was about say, to say, <laughs> if we want to get our, you know, no. our plus rated, I'm talking. I'm talking about the podcast. I'm not talking about in life. <laughs> no, I'm talking about that nut challenge. Do y'all yeah. remember the nut oh challenge? My God, oh. you about the, the hot nut, the spicy yes. nut challenge. Yes, yes. that was Where so it was like wonderful. In stages, Dwayne's like face was a different spiciness. No, yeah, I that was, was a different kind of nut altogether. For new I thing. was thinking about the chip. But the, no. the, so the, yeah, the chip, oh, the chip right. happened first uh, in like Stephen's old house, and like we all had all our part of the the flaming hot chip. That was fun. Zach threw up. That was, <laughs> that was to this day our most popular stream. And really? it, it was our most popular stream for the longest time, and. I think part of it is because Zach left the room, went down the hall to my bathroom, and you could still hear him through the microphones vomiting yeah. off that spicy chip. It's a chip. natural reaction I oh. have. And we went through so much milk. Oh, yeah. so great. Oh, so much milk. oh, your motherfuckers ate the milk! Yeah, that's exactly what Ada said. Because she's like, what the fuck? I just bought a gallon of milk and you guys drank the whole thing. I'll come back and it's gone. Burning. Uh. But we got to thank Dwayne for all that because he got us these hot yeah. challenges. So. Hey, Dwayne, I think you still have hot chips for us at some uh, point, yeah, don't you? I've got a, I've got the 2020 chips ready to go. We should probably eat them before they really go. <laughs> I have yeah, one. we should do that. You should tell me when we're going to You're going to do it with us. <clears throat> I need to not eat that day. <laughs> that's, well, no, no, no. That's how we're going to like, potent with age. Yeah, maybe. That's, we're, that's how we're going to finish out 12 Hours of Terror. Oh my God. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> so that is one thing that, that did start during pandemic. That's almost a podcast thing. Cause everybody here does it except for Mike, who I don't think could take 12 straight hours of horror movies or Catherine. No. But Catherine, I don't know if you, you, you've heard us talk about this, right? We do 12 hours. Of course hours I of have. I, yeah, I know right that you guys room. do it, but I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to be there. If you have 12 hours of sci-fi, <laughs> If you do I a do that. Marvel, if you do a Marvel thing where we watch everything in chronological order, if we have a musical hours. day, oh, that's man. true, we will. But I'm there for that. I am not there for the horror movies. Uh, Catherine, you and I have musical day covered. Let's do it. <gasps> <I'm>, <laughs> does it all have to? Does it have to all be musical, or can it be music movies? Like look, look, like the uh, commitments. Look, look, I love the commitment. That is your. 12 hours music. of terror. That How about, music. yes, it is your 12 hours of terror. But wait, 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 wait. Can we make it bad movie musicals? Culmination, we find Cats, the butthole version. Yes, we need the butthole version. Oh, I need oh, the butthole oh, 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 oh. version. Once was enough with that. So then time. basically every Disney live action. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Although, fuck. well, then I'm going to have to get super wasted because exactly. I can't get through, I can't get through uh, Lady and the Tramp. I have tried. I've tried my best, but Disney, I, I'm, I shouldn't say anything about Bob Chapek because he probably has a target on my head anyway. So oh, I'm just gonna. Is so I like, forgot so that bad. existed. <laughs> he, so, I blame him for everything, but that's okay. That's neither here nor there. I'm gonna. That's the line. funniest. Um, pre like pre like in like beginning of pandemic thing is the last movie I saw was The Hunt, and I was very happy ending there because it's a good movie. <gasps> that was a and good these, one. 
these jackasses, Zach and Mike and Dwayne, went to see Cats at a midnight screening and texted me pictures. <laughs> oh, you're missing out. You're missing out. Little did they know that was, that was their bad, last bad, fucking bad. movie. Fuck. Yeah. It was really fun. I, I, the movie was horrible, but the crowd was on fire. And it was, I the mean, crowd was confused. The best I would part be confused. Was it, was, it was just bewildering. That's the only movie I can think of. A bunch of buttholes would actually improve it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why the audience was great. Because there's never mind. I remember there wasn't Nico and enough, our, there was our not last enough movie. booze in the building. <laughs> our last um, movie before pandemic, we actually saw two in the same day. It was a was short. Sonic. No, uh, yeah. it was a short, like 90 minute dog rescue one at the planetarium. Oh, narrated by Chris Evans. And then we went to the bell court and saw Color Out of Space. And oh, I really wish oh, we just God. Died Shit. with the that dog movie. So bad. I would have been fine if the dog movie was the last movie we saw. Oh, <laughs> and we had to go see Color Out of Space. And that everything. I like uh-huh. Color Out of Space. I thought it was pretty fun. <laughs> I have not seen it. I have not seen that. It, uh, I, I'd say aside from the reanim- the reanimator, it's probably the best Lovecraft movie we've had. Oh, like you're gonna disagree. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so let me ask you this. And Nico, I don't remember. <laughs> had you joined the show when Drank sponsored us? Drank? I Drank. vaguely remember Drank. So um, Drank was a it was a very popular thing there for about five minutes. And it was a uh there was a couple different ones. One was called Purple Drank, and there was yeah. just one called oh, Drank. God. And basically it was it tasted like grape soda, except it had valerian <laughs> root, it had melatonin, it had chamomile it was a it was a relaxed drink like a blow your roll with drink <laughs> yeah people would mix it with booze which i never could figure out because it... <laughs> so they sponsored us for a while and they sent us a case of it to drink on the show and i'll never forget it we drank it on the show and mike fell asleep during the show <laughs> after we drank it like you could i got pictures somewhere i was trying to find them with him with his head down and that hat on his head sleep <laughs> asleep at the table that was that was when mike was managing the mic setup too yes he yep. was still running the mixing board and all that stuff oh, he just no. put his head down halfway through the show after no. we drank that stuff it was so As, funny. one of the best camping trips i ever had in my life i got up one morning had a can of drink set laid down in a hammock and just snoozed all morning it was, <laughs> it was so peaceful <laughs> I you see like that's it. another food company that's gone now that was a sponsor of us until they you know died. that reminds me of when mike would go on vacation and join us for podcasts <laughs> oh. every single time he just was just saying like go back and forth. <laughs> <It's his mic. laughs> I would have oh, to get up the next morning and watch it to make sure I didn't do anything too embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> and the answer was yes every time. The answer was usually it was usually just a forty-five minutes of giggling is what <laughs> it boiled down to, it, which was and then just an empty scene and then and some of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There would be no commentary and be like. <laughs> 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 so uh, so oh, that, a this, good job. the show is actually how we uh, originally met Zach, right? Didn't you didn't you first see us at an uh, anime convention M-Tech. live event? Two thousand eight. Yeah, two thousand eight. We used to do Asian a lot of live horror events. cinema panel. Yeah, it's an Asian horror cinema panel. That was actually with me, uh, and that was with somebody uh, with Fred who wasn't actually on the show, but he was off to the side of the show he was part of the group kind of thing and when we did and then Asian... I saw you again in 2009 yep and that's when and then there was some twisted event where me and mike and some of us went to a movie and we heard somebody in the back of the theater going cinegeek cinegeek <laughs> was it toy story three <laughs> it was one of those movies and i thought we were being stalked and it was fascinating <laughs> we were. It was toy story three. <laughs> he's still with us <laughs> and he's still here. I he's in the room, walking, Steven. <laughs> I know. I remember walking into Kick Ass. Yep. That Saturday night, and y'all were at the film festival. Yep. I'm like, oh, it's Cinekeek. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would say because yeah, I, I remember y'all from MTAC. I just yeah. like that Zach is going to go see Kick Ass while you guys are at the Nashville Film Festival, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> we were there right. trying to better ourselves filmically, and yeah, you were in line for something. 
Yeah, I don't God know. knows what it was, but it, they were checking like the ID at the door and everything. It was everybody was crammed in that hallway. Oh, Zach, were your yeah. parents with you? This reminds me of when I would run into you at Belk. <laughs> that was one <laughs> fucking time. That was one time. <laughs> Good time. And it was last week. No. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell me it was last week. I have time to redo shit. <laughs> Why can't we get Belt to sponsor the show, Stephen? <laughs> right? Because I think they're on their way to closing too, right? Yeah, probably. Uh, they'll just be adapted from something from Parisians to Belk. They'll be called like exactly. off the rack, whatever. Somebody will buy them out like a bank. Yeah. Yep. So... So Zach and Mike and I did the Dramatique documentary, and that's where Nathan and Catherine joined the podcast. Who doggy? Yeah, I don't remember how we got you guys suckered into being part of this. Well, I don't we actually that... started off with Smashality, and nah, then that's we not true. Merged... That's not true. We did we did the Culture Smash show first, and we we started to do Smashality as a spinoff because only you two were caught up on. Uh, all the reality stuff and no one would talk about reality shows and I was willing to so we we tried to do smash out I will minute. say Katie and I probably did one sh- actual culture smash podcast and then we were like well we want to talk about more reality shows and you said well let's do smash and so yeah. we did that and then it just merged into coming on for culture smash most well it I think scheduling was just had gotten to be like smash alley was starting to get views and stuff and we were doing pretty good but then it just scheduling got incredibly difficult to do yeah. two shows a week. And I feel like too it was probably one of those things where we just fought, kind of felt out of our depth because it was very I, I feel like I want to say another one of the reasons was there wasn't as much for us to talk about in the beginning mm-hmm. because that might have been before disney took over everything and before yeah yeah i i feel like we were just kind of out of our depth but then disney you know the being the monster that it is i still love disney i still love disney but it took over everything and then we could actually talk about stuff and we started getting into all the shows that everybody else was watching like Mm -hmm. walking dead and what else was around that time i don't remember uh breaking bad was was I'm breaking, yeah, breaking bad. bad. Yeah. That was a thing, though, for us for a long time. Walking Dead is is the three um, of us will watch every Sunday together. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last show we I had, what was that? It, the start of season four. Oh, yes. oh and Franklin oh, and Wild and, Wing Cafe. Yes, and we had the guy who had like a bit role in it on the show and everything. Yeah. That was Santiago so much fun. Carilio. Santiago. Oh, I still oh. actually all these years later talk to him once in a while. Uh, he messages me once in a while through for Facebook. Nice. Yeah, yeah. He's still he's still uh, trudging away trying to do the acting thing. Good um, for him. But but yeah, that was a really fun show. We while in cafe cafe we set up and did a live show, which we that was kind of got neat. away from, but because it's a lot of, of work to do. Yeah. But, yeah. But yeah, that was a fun time. We um, I, I there think was you a, guys didn't you guys we play performed. music before? Yeah. I was yeah, about I was to say, say we Theron and Thand it up. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I think we did a Walking Dead music parody because we had a sh- or no, no, maybe we just did Sharknado. Did we, we did do Sharknado? Sharknado. Yeah, that's right. Sharknado. Yeah. Which, by the way, my two-year-old son is he loves uh, Rock Lobster now. He has the best taste in music. That, and he only wants to listen to Iron Man. I am it. I am it. I am it. Yes, Black Sabbath. That's what he wants all the time. I support this blend. I support I, that. I think that yeah. you're raising him right. I think I dare say that we probably have more Marvel shit in our house than anybody else does. Not combined, <laughs> but like if you could see the amount of Marvel toys, clothing, everything else that we have in this house, he's he's all about Captain America. It's really sweet. It warms my heart, makes me very happy. And also makes me so glad that I met you guys because otherwise I would know nothing about Marvel. I wouldn't have gotten as much into it as I did. I mean, I know for a fact, Tina and I are about Captain America. (laughs) (laughs) For a different reason than Jackson. <laughs> That's don't, probably don't speak too soon. For now. (laughs) For now. Tell her silly. American flag pattern t-shirt on. (laughs) 
<laughs> so uh, you, all should, the way. you should see what's on my ass. Oh my <laughs> God. And you know, what's funny is that we didn't even kind of go over this, but um, Nico came to the show through a mutual friend that he and I have uh, through MTAC as a guest. And then you decided to join the show, which was great. And then we realized that Tina was actually the funny one. So I really <laughs> wanted her to come be part of the show. <laughs> And now she's on the show, which is, is yeah. really, really great. And she's still the funny one. And little did we know, she's also the algorithm queen. She's, she manages <laughs> film ball for us now. She's got all I am the spreadsheet master. It's true. Well, she's got it down. And we got to talk about when Dwayne started joining the show. Because it was shortly before that Walking Dead. Because you got us at Wild Wing Cafe, right? I... I found out that they were doing like a, a show and I knew some people there and, and, and I think Steven closed the deal, but I, I was definitely like, yeah. Oh, I've got the perfect venue for us. Yeah. So you guys have heard this story before, but for the podcast sake, I can tell the story of how I originally met Dwayne. It's a funny one. It's a good story actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so I was doing a thing for Microsoft called Contrek, and it was based off a documentary that I had done. And basically what that was is a mini series of shows about different conventions across the Southeast. And each one with each convention was its own little thing. And Alan, who was on the show, um, was one of the hosts and our, uh, the friend of the show, Brittany, who has been on the show a few times was co-host and we would go to different events. We were at Lebowski Fest filming all about the Big Lebowski and about the festival and interviewing people and stuff. And Alan and I had finished for the day and we're just kind of walking around, taking in the sights. And we heard somebody <laughs> randomly behind us. This is a, another stalker situation. Go, Siggy, Siggy, <laughs> slurring like a mofo boy. We were like, what is this? And Dwayne in the lobby of the hotel comes walking up with a giant beer, like sloshing it off yeah. the floor and stuff. He's like, was, you guys should come hang him. out. You guys should come hang out with us. And I looked at Alan and Alan was like, no, nah, I don't know. I don't know. And Dwayne was like, we've got a bunch of beer in our, our hotel room. And we were like, let's go. So from that point on, we were friends with Dwayne. Yep. <laughs> and then somehow Dwayne ended up on the show. I don't know if you remember how you ended up being on the show, Dwayne. I, I probably I just know, I started coming you. in for random episodes like the Lost finale. And when we did yeah. the um, Star Trek Into Darkness wrap up right after watching the movie. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, God. But, Stephen, that was- I remember all point. your motherfuckers liking me except wait for me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to hear what he's going to say. <laughs> but, but that was not the first time we met because we actually, I, I ended up when you all were doing a live podcast at Hypericon. Hypericon. Oh my yeah. God. And this was early Hypericon too, right? So yeah. we, you had set up in a hotel room uh, yep. and it was just I enough for now. maybe six or seven people in there. I, I, will, I remember specifically you had a trivia question and it was what, what horror film was originally known as the Babysitter Killers? And my answer was a good answer, but incorrect. I answered when a stranger calls. Yep. Sadly, it was How ugly. dare it was you? <laughs> Do you remember the answer now? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> I was like, does he really? Yes. Or is he just going yeah. to pretend? I was like, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't have to prove myself to you. I know. But I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't I wish I had something to give you now. <laughs> I don't often forget trivia questions that I've gotten wrong. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I had forgotten that. And there was like ten people in there or something. It was a sweaty yeah. convention room, convention <laughs> hotel room. It's just you know very fun, huh. I guess. But I'm pretty sure Good from problem. that point on, I started listening to. I, I was going back and listening to episodes. Like I had this little walk I would do every day, and I'd put you all on and uh, and listen. And then yeah, well, we just started hanging out and going to movies together. That's what we do. See, yeah. guys, dreams do come true. Dreams do come true. <laughs> I will say, I think our ratings were kind of got higher when Dwayne joined. Uh, oh, it, 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 as as tip as is typical, it always depends on the subject matter of the conversation. Now yeah. that lost episode, we don't do episodes like that anymore. But we don't have finales like that anymore. We we yeah, did an hour and a half different. on Lost, what the, that season or series yeah. finale, but, which was uh, a dumb finale. Yes, I didn't hate it as much as everybody else. I, yeah, I think I it's because it. I predicted it. Yeah. There, um, there but were, we will... Yeah, I don't have a ahead. problem with the finale as much. As I've got other issues with the show. I was fine with the finale, how it ended. Yeah, season... What was it? Season four? I it was Season three or season four of that show is... I have a, an entire problem with that whole season. 
um, more than the finale. But we will be talking about Stranger Things here in a few minutes, which was um, pretty cool. I mean, that, that one's pretty close. Spoilers. All right, so Steven thinks it's pretty cool. I yeah, think it's I'll pretty cool. Pop. All right, I'll have to pop so, up for that. Here's um, something that uh, Catherine, I don't know if you even thought about this or remember it. The fact that one of our first live streams, our Facebook live streams was at, I think it's the second Hunger Games movie when you and Nathan dressed up. I remember that. Remember? Oh, of course. Oh. I get I get uh, Facebook memories for that with me dressed up like Effie Trinket and I was living for it. That was, that was so much fun getting to dress up and do those things with y'all. Yeah. I love that. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> <laughs> that does not surprise me. That's too much alcohol between then and now. That's what that is. Um, me it was and movies a- at that age was a little shit show. So, <laughs> <laughs> L- little, A little. <laughs> I was Mike was on vacation so- when I was going to the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaking was- in chicken tendies and box wine. <laughs> right? That's it. It was such a fun day, though. Um, <laughs> you know, it's the simple pleasures. It is the so simple the, pleasures. It really is. The Hunger Games, though, the first Hunger Games, though, that one, uh, that movie is is monumental for the show because that was the first fantasy film ball season. That oh, we yeah. ever had because no one thought that movie was going to make any money except me and <laughs> I, I won that bracket and i've not had as good a win since then how <laughs> sad sure yeah that's top gun <laughs> and we, we've we've had some <laughs> we've had some amazing thumb balls too yeah let me uh, let have. me just go on ahead and and say here steven this uh bracket is not your bracket either no <laughs> this ain't this is not my bracket baby this is not my bracket i'm really blowing is it, it my stuff. bracket it might be your bracket go fuck yourself. right now it is your bracket oh yeah oh. Hey, Catherine. we adjusted baby. the show since you've been on here where we have we uh have the explicit tag on, on the show now so people say what they want pretty much Oh, I, shit. We um, <laughs> we've always been able to say whatever we want to. I used to edit it though. I used to beep it. Yeah, uh, it used to be which one is gonna cause us to have that explicit tag first, yeah. Zach or yeah. Tina? It was never fucking me. It well, was usually you. Sometimes it was me. It was actually. mostly you. We used to, uh, we used what the fuck? The, I mean, it would, it would be show curse me in a minute. <laughs> oh, that's right, just... we did. I forgot. About that. Yeah, that was our yeah, pregame. Yeah. We would just we say would all the sit there. It take sounded a shot. like a room full of people with Tourette's syndrome and <laughs> fuck shit. I shit. Really God, wish I it. Don't don't fucking damn it, bitch. Shut just up. a whole bunch of 12 year olds drinking yeah, alcohol, you know. you know. Exactly. Exactly. Not the way that um, most Stephen just King case, just in case start. the FBI's listening. There aren't it actually twelve-year-olds drinking alcohol on the show. Correct. Exactly. The we FBI were, doesn't we all, care about twelve-year-olds drinking. Not, not some of our reason. viewers might. We were only mentally twelve, but physically we were of age. That's the thing. <laughs> I, if if you are offended by twelve-year-olds drinking alcohol, you are listening to the wrong podcast. That's for sure. That's for sure. So again, the way that's the... not actually on this podcast. <laughs> yep. Allegedly. This... Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, for real though. Allegedly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, not at all. We do not have underage drinking on this show right now. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> has has anybody actually been on the show underage drinking? No. Oh, no. Absolutely not. Never. Not now. You know, I was 21. Before yeah. I joined, yeah, yeah, you were yeah, I, yeah, Zach, yeah. Zach, when did you join? You, you were the only one that I'm worried about. Yeah, right. You were no, the questionable wait. one. This wasn't I on the podcast. I was Twenty. Yeah, yeah, I think he was because it wasn't on the podcast. But I remember one film shoot that uh... I was gonna <laughs> say that <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we had a celebratory. Uh, That's right. Uh, I, yeah, I remember a certain somebody whose name will not be said. His mother gave Zach a shot because yeah. she was pretty hammered. And she's yeah. like, here, have a shot with us. Yeah. I'm just sitting there like, what do I do? <laughs> and I just looked at him and said, take it. Fucking take it. I'm so glad we're, you know, that's what she said. On a, on a live broadcast. That's good. 
No. I'll, have yes. reminder, I'll have hey. a reminder next time I see her. I would never you... have made that joke if I would have remembered that Zach was <laughs> underage for a while. I apologize. I, I never should have opened that. that can of worms. But I just apologize about that. I don't it think doesn't it matter. He was not on the show. He he didn't drink on the, on the podcast. Like, yeah, I was gonna say he didn't drink on the show. We, yeah, that we wasn't didn't do back then. With the uh, we weren't doing the most of the time. The podcasts were in public places and stuff. Yeah, at that point when Zach was here, we were still out a lot. Yeah, when he was underage, as as it progressed, it moved into my house. You know, once once I had a household to actually uh, move into and not an apartment, which was we actually used to shoot shoot uh, a little in the apartment. We shot Smashality in the apartment yep. because it was only the three of us. We shot that on my old green couch. Yeah, oh, was... the woman who lived in your building who would let us in and she called yep. Mike purple shirt. Purple shirt. <laughs> yeah. Purple shirt. She had a name I only wore she purple shirts for like three or something. Years. <laughs> <laughs> she might have. Man, I I. I shudder to think how much the rent in your old apartment is oh for now. My. Well, Catherine knows how much it was before she left, and it was already exorbitant because she was there longer than me. Oh, it was like what was it? Like five hundred square feet? Because I was I was in a studio, so it was yeah. a shoebox, and it was like twelve hundred a month, maybe. Holy shit! Holy yeah, it's got to be like two two grand now. I would say. Easy. Yeah. It, it would yeah. have yeah. to be. Oh yeah. Because oh, they yeah. did all those upgrades, they renovations them, and everything. They Oof. put the granite countertops in there, and all of a sudden everything's two thousand dollars. Catherine, I've, got a, I've got a good Culture Smash memory. Do you remember when you and I hosted the show at Wizard World in Nashville? I remember that. That was great. Yeah, we met that the, was uh, awesome. Um, oh gosh, we met the drag uh, the the drag queen uh, Dixie Normus. Oh my gosh, I I have complete like. I'd forgotten about it until literally this second. <laughs> Those pictures pop also, up on my Facebook memories. <laughs> didn't we also meet some girl who was dressed up like Captain EO and she argued with me about like the etymology or, or some of the lore like surrounding Captain EO. And I was like, please don't do this right now. What? I know more than you do. And I feel like you were the one having to like hold me back. And I'm like, Please don't. I literally have this tattooed on my side. I have watched this more times than you can imagine. I have a stuffed hooter. I have the glasses. Please stop. What was that First about? Off, when you're saying you have a stuffed tutor, that's not what people are going to think. <laughs> my hooter is not currently stuffed. I have a oh, blush. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any saving this. No, there's not. Oh no! Did, did you say um, stuffed hooter or stuffed cooter? I... Stuffed <sighs> hooter. Okay, it's right. hooter who eats the map. I don't know if that's any. Your eats, your hooter eats maps. <laughs> he eats everything. Teeth. Teeth. Whoa! Wow. All right, so I, uh, Catherine, I saw your message. I know you've got a scoop yeah. pretty soon. So I want to talk about really quick. Um, one of the cooler uh, interview ops we got was with Rena Riffle. <laughs> you and Nathan did that interview. That was us. great. I still have that movie. That is one of my most treasured objects that I ever got from you guys because Showgirls 2 is just, it is a fever trippy journey I, I don't know what it is it's insane it's wonderful and whenever i tell people that i have it they're like oh so we're gonna play a drinking game and watch it i was like ah sure that's the only way to watch it <laughs> right because it's oh my gosh and she was everything i wanted her to be and more she was like david lynch married a, a las vegas stripper and she just did all of the drugs that and I don't mean her. meth. Yeah. I like acid, all the acid and like I don't know where she drugs. was. I don't know where she was, but I want to visit there. I don't want to live there. <laughs> I just want to visit. So um, so anybody who who doesn't know Rena Riffle had played a small part in Showgirls. Penny Slots. Yep, and then she was primary uh in Showgirls 2. She wasn't and primary. She wrote it. She directed it. She yeah. starred in it. She produced it. She found the funding for it. That was Rita Riffle. That was and her yuppie. baby. And she was so much fun to talk to. 
and she that was, was funny because it was one of those things where I had been contacted by her her agent and offered an interview and I just set it up and I let you two go at it because I'm like I don't know what to say and you guys killed it it was a really fun interview it was one of the better interview little sessions that we've had on this show it was really cool we've done a lot of authors and different things oh shoot I I'm not gonna like I, I'll punch it in in post I'll punch it in but the trailer the original trailer we cut for the show with Catherine's voiceover is still up it's still yeah. out there That's uh, with her with her little sultry culture smash TV yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. We filmed that in the old apartment, right? We did. Yeah, we, we did. did. Yeah, fun yeah. times. Um, okay, let me just look real quick. Um, so the other thing that uh, Zach and I were talking about this in pre-show, if you guys, like I know life gets in the way and that's why people come and go in the show, really. Um, we're all family. If you guys want to come back and play film ball with us, we would love for you guys to do that when the next session starts. So or pop in on it, a show. Or pop in yeah. on a show anytime you want to pop in on a show, for sure. But I think you guys should play film ball with us if you can make it work. Because <laughs> film ball would be <laughs> somebody now. other I'm than fucking totally Zach has got to win. <laughs> or it would just be completely random picks. That for me now. That's what that, you that, always did. That would be we still fun. talk yeah, about Winner's Bone. Mike's that's, Winner's that's, Bone. <laughs> oh, hell that's yeah. Right, I remember that. Hell yeah. Jennifer Lawrence's first big movie, Mike picks Winner's Bone for every. Oh, that was an Oscar game, right? Yeah, it wasn't, that it was, was an to Oscar pick game. Best Picture. Yeah, yeah well, that's another other. one. Come back and play Oscar game. Come back and do little random yeah. things, gift guides. Oh sure. yeah, especially since I have ways to like really anger Zach and Steven. So I'll just randomize oh, what I'm picking. I think this God. year it was I rolled <laughs> dice. Yeah. And so the dice would have Ugh. outlandish picks. And they're like, why are you doing yeah, this? Yeah, we need more competitive blood in here because if, Tina's rolling for picks. If I recall correctly, you weren't you, you lost, but it wasn't oh, I like lost that hard. big. It <laughs> wasn't the worst <laughs> loss ever. It was like by yeah. three or four. Yeah. Tina, I did that for my first Oscar game, and I remember Stephen <laughs> being really mad about it. I'm I like, was like, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Meanwhile, me and Nathan are like super competitive. Nathan and I are so competitive that we are teaming up and have signed up to try to be on Amazing Race, and I think we'll get kicked off because we're competing with each other the whole damn time. <laughs> That's no, why they that should way. pick you. No, it's exactly I, why they should I, pick us. TV. We'll win. I just need you to pull your weight. <laughs> you need to pull your weight. Nathan's like, we'll win. I'll just win more. Yeah. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. It, I'm going to jump off that building faster and better. Bitch, I will jump selling. off the building. Let's go. If it, it's right, got so, spiders, it's all you. Um, one other thing that is worth mentioning here is the very first time that Zach and I simultaneously stormed out of the show during a live show was due to Nathan's number one pick of Black Hat in our top 10 list. We just got up and stormed out of the show because that movie is so no, damn bad. It wasn't out of the show. It was we, out of the house. Yeah, we left the entire house, both of us. And, and it, it was, was weird. It was my own house <laughs> simultaneously. It's not even the worst movie we've seen. Second That's off, true. there yeah, was I mean, some great denying that. pectoral debuts in that movie. Finally, years later, Nathan admitted, I picked it because of Hemsworth's tight shirts. And I'm like, you I mean, I, think, I think it was obvious at the time. Yeah. Yeah, he just wouldn't was... say it. He wouldn't say no. it. I, I thought it was about... a great story, too. Oh. I like when uh, um, Tina tricked out Zach. In, uh, oh, I trolled him hard by saying my favorite movie of the year was The Dead Don't Die. Oh. And oh. I, oh. I leaned yes. into it, too. I was going about how the soundtrack was very innovative and unique, and the acting was so weird that it was surreal and really made you think. And he was out the door. And that movie like, such Nico's a gigantic trying piece to of breathe, shit. he's laughing. Hard. and Steve is like please tell me you're joking and as soon as he leaves I'm like oh yeah I'm totally just <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing I can't Dwayne will tell him. you that movie was shit I can't trust oh, yeah. that, that, that because Zach was like oh the Babadook is like the scariest movie of the year oh my gosh Zach and I'm like Zach what the flying fuck yeah, it's not so scary. Oh, you know, one other thing that just occurred to me that happened on this show was in the, in the old house when we were recording in the old yellow house was when uh, Alan Smith 
came to the house and we didn't know oh, it. He oh. fucking snuck Holy in the shit. house while we were recording <laughs> yeah. and scared the living shit out of Mike. He scared us so bad that Mike didn't talk for 30 minutes of the show. He just uh, sat yeah. there like this. It was so bad. And, <laughs> and looking good, back yeah. on the video, Alan had video of it on his phone. He was filming himself sneak in, barely not yeah. laughing. That took yeah, five years. You watched him do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. We do have uh, to acknowledge how Alan would freaking annoy every single one of us. Oh, like, Alan had Alan, something to troll all of us. Uh, yeah. Alan cried. Alan cried when we were talking about something with Star Wars. Star and Wars. Was it Last Jedi? He yeah, literally Jedi. cried. And it wasn't necessarily because it was like, it was so beautiful and I love it. And it's my childhood and it's nostalgia. He cried because he was so angry because nobody was agreeing with him. I don't even remember yeah. what it was. I had a goddamn so list of issues with that movie. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. And as I he remember, was mad at us at that point. I remember that's why he his cried. defense was, it's Star Wars. And I'm like... Bad writing is bad writing. Okay. Alan also trolled me for years over Avatar. Like, for <laughs> years he trolled me, that son of a bitch. And I stand by Avatar being one of the best theatrical experiences I ever had. Absolutely. Even it if it's not the best the movie. Best Absolutely. Theatrical. Oh, my God. Because yeah, yes. the second Every... one's coming out, and it's going to be beautiful, too, and it's probably going to suck, too, but the, be- the experience is going to be I gorgeous. hope a tree Three doesn't hours fall. Long. The tree's going to fall, baby. <laughs> yeah. James Cameron, screw your pee break. Dump it out. All right. He actually, he's he's said, like, just go. Just yeah. go to the bathroom. So I, I want to wrap wrap up a segment here because I know that, that Catherine has, has to put Jackson to bed. And I just want to say that I love you guys and thank you. And I never had a, a, a clue that we'd go 600 episodes <laughs> and, you know, that we'd end up with family out of it. And you guys are the best. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys really are the best. Love um, you guys. And- we love you too. Come see us soon. Absolutely. Will do. Yeah. I, I need to. I need to do that. I definitely do. All right, everybody. I love you so much. Have fun discussing Stranger Things. I'll discuss it with you later when I've actually seen everything. Bye. Get on it. Bye. Okay, bye. bye. Getting on it. Okay, bye. All right. I was just oh. thinking back. The last time I think we saw everyone in this group, we were all humping a lot of pastries. <laughs> yeah, we hunt some serious pastries. Yep. Yeah. And, and and the time is rolling around. That's our forty eight hour film project and we all do that together. And that's that time is coming. We're pre planning yeah. now as much as we're allowed to. We're we're planning for August for the for the next film. So it's gonna be a really fun time. So uh Dwayne, have you watched Stranger Things? Yes. Okay, good. Mike, I know you haven't watched it, but maybe we'll, we'll our, our our discussion will encourage you. Yeah, it could actually yeah. encourage me to watch it. But real quick, uh, we'll do the box office because I've, I, uh, I, Dwayne, I think Dwayne, I think me and you and Mike have all talked about this. But I'm doing Zach's pushing 100 project this year. I'm seeing 100 films in the theater. Yep. So most of the stuff in this top 10 list okay. I've seen. So here's the box office. Number 10 is Jug Jug Geo. I haven't seen that one, but it made 308 thousand, made a million that's, that's dollars. That's gotta be so far. again. Gotta be. Number nine is Doctor Strange: The Multiverse of Madness. It made four hundred twelve million. Wow, or four hundred twelve thousand. It's made four hundred ten million so far. Uh, number eight is Everything Everywhere All at Once. It made five hundred fifty one thousand dollars. Made sixty seven million so far. That's I love that this movie is still going. Yeah. I love it. Right, the, the physical copy is out, and it still has a single showing every day in the theater. It's great. Isn't it's it? so damn good. Yep. Number seven, new this week, is Mr. Malcolm's List. I had to look this up. It's based off a romance novel. That's the big thing. It made yeah, it's a Regency 000. romance. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Number six is Lightyear. That one made six point four million. Uh, or uh, yeah, it's made one hundred and five so far. My quick take is meh. Mm. It's not that good. Uh, the Black Phone. I'll talk about more in a minute. It made uh, twelve point two. It's made forty seven so far. Four is Jurassic World Dominion. It made sixteen point three. It's made three hundred thirty-two so far, and it sucks balls. Yeah, no. <laughs> Number three I don't is care. That's three hundred thirty-two million. That's in my film ball. So fuck yeah, that. <laughs> so here's something interesting. I tried to see Elvis the other day, and it, the theater was near sold out, and I skipped it. I, really? Yeah, I couldn't get a good seat, so I skipped it. Yeah, I saw Minions and the Black Phone, and I was going to go in the day with Elvis, and I couldn't get in because it was just too packed. I couldn't get a good seat. Yep. Uh, it made 
uh, 18 million. It's made 66.7 so far. Number two is probably the best theatrical experience the last five years, at least, is Top Gun Maverick. Made 25 million. It's made 564 so far. It's a billion dollar movie globally. Should I see that movie? Boy, you shouldn't just see that movie. You should see it in theater because it's legit. I'm actually going to try to see that at the Naval uh, Aviation Museum in Pensacola oh. next week. That's oh cool. my God. Wow. Wow. That's such an awesome place to see it. And let me tell you, uh, Mike, you're going to love it because the thing is, it's practical. There's real planes doing shit. It's not yeah, just a I, bunch I, of CGI. I've heard, it's, I've heard it's just simply amazing. And it, it's and the movie is so good, it makes the original movie better. And that says a lot because that I mean that movie a lot. It does. And number one is Minions: The Rise of Gru. It had a hundred and seven <laughs> million dollar. Who who expected this movie to be that big? The That's Gentle insane. Minions. The Gentlemen. The yeah, gentle minions. there they are. The freaking Gentle Minions. It's, uh, it's I an saw evil it. plan. Like I couldn't recount the plot to you that well right now because I've already mostly forgotten it. It's just so boring. It's so boring. But that's not your wheelhouse, anyways. It, it's no, not. but apparently it sacks because he has it for film ball. Oh, I do. Exactly. Yep. Fuck yeah, <laughs> boys! <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. baby! Everybody needs to see this movie. Minions and Maverick together is going to be a force to be reckoned with. And listen, Nathan thought he had it locked up because of Doctor Strange. Look, you need to put on your best suit. And go see Minions. Uh, no, you don't. That movie sucks balls. Or Opening just this put weekend, on some overalls and a yellow shirt. <laughs> that's true, too. So this weekend, Thor Love and Thunder finally opens. It's 71% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I hated Thor Ragnarok, so my expectations are low. We'll see. I'm going to see it because I freaking see everything. Do you think this will be another addition into we should have just stopped at Endgame? Yes. Because that is my feeling right now is is the Marvel Cinematic Universe really should have just stopped right there. It was perfect as it was. Everything that's come out after it, I've not. Hey, really... sure, shit wasn't perfect. You didn't like Doctor Strange. It has its uh, moments, but the taken Doctor, as a whole, the, the new Doctor Strange four. is the best. But I, not like Zach. Zach's being a. You didn't like Spider Man. No, I actually liked Spider Man when it came out, but I don't feel it's aged well for me. Like, the more I sit on it, the more I'm like, you know, if you pull the nostalgia out of that Spider-Man movie, there's really nothing left on the bone. Motherfucker, I was saying that coming out of the film. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not an asshole like you are. I, I actually mean, enjoy uh, things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> I actually appreciated the nostalgia of it. It's just... You didn't, you didn't like I, Eternals? No. Oh, boy. I hated Eternals. Hush. I hated Eternals. Uh, and I didn't like Shang-Chi. I, I thought that was a <gasps> bad movie. I liked yeah. the first two thirds of the movie. That's how uh, I felt about it, Mika. I felt like that third, and, and the more Marvel stuff I see, I'm like, man, they need to tighten up these third acts a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're they're going on way too. They do not have to make everything in a two and a half hour movie experience. That and they yeah. don't need every movie to have that third act be like this epic world ending battle. Sometimes it's okay to have lower stakes, and yeah. especially exactly. when it's like the first run. Yeah. Well, and that's the best thing about the the most recent Spider Man movie. Honestly, is the last five minutes. That's the yes. most Spider Man yeah. that we've yes. had of Spider Man since yeah. the yeah. original Spider Man Two. Yeah. Like that third act is when you have all the nostalgia, like when you get when you get Toby and, and Garfield yeah. all in there, and then after that, when when all of the climactic fight is done, then you get uh, that actual real bit of post mind wipe. Peter Parker dealing with the fact that his life sucks and it's his choice to be Spider-Man. It's like, yeah, yeah, this is right. This feels yeah, this like this is Spider-Man. Spider yeah. And and that's also, why I did come out hopeful from that movie because that last last five, ten minutes was so good. Also, yeah, one of the plot holes that's still from Eternals is how come nobody past Eternals is talking about, I don't know, the giant hand and face that came out of the earth in the middle of the ocean? Exactly. Yeah. Nothing. That's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. Look. Look, yep. nostalgia. Yeah. So real quick, I'm not going to spo be spoilery because uh, I know you guys haven't seen the Black Phone yet. Is it just mm -hmm. me? I'm the only one? I've, I've read, read the, the short story. I haven't seen the... Okay. I'm, I'm so, completely blank. All right. So the only thing about... what The one you know precursor I'll, I'll give about 
the movie is it's um, it's a Blumhouse, and my automatic response to the Blumhouse logo is to almost vomit because their movies suck. I just groan. And with that said, this is a good movie. It's fun. It's a fun. Now I see people, especially on TikTok, saying it's a masterpiece. Hmm. It's it it's not a movie like something like The Exorcist. It's a masterpiece that people talk about thirty years later. But this a, it's a fun movie. It has good atmosphere. Those sort of um, King family characterizations that both Joe Hill and Stephen King are so good at. Little bits of that do come through, and that's really pretty cool. But you also see the parts where oh, this this is probably where Joe Hill developed something really cool in the short story that's just cut from what? the movie. There there's one character in particular I think is shortchanged, but the movie's good. The atmosphere works. Ethan Hawke is is good. I recommend. I recommend. It's a good time. So I was pleasantly surprised. And you know, the biggest recommendation I can give is that Michael hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I, if you if 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 the movie's too scary or whatnot, I absolutely recommend reading the short. Uh, it's like an audiobook on YouTube, even, but it's good. It's really mm-hmm. quite disturbing. I like Joe Hill. I like Joe Hill. Uh, I think there's an element based off our discussions about the short story. There's an element in the movie that wasn't in the short story. Yeah, the entire story of if you've seen the trailer, it's the little girl, right? Yeah the the little girl character not in the book. So at all, her 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 ability or whatever that you see in the trailer is is in is you know integral to the film. Really, but at the at the you as you watch the film, you can also think they didn't need it. It just felt like it's there and it's important in the movie, but at the same time, you you could you could see it and think it wasn't needed. It was it's just something they added to build up some more characters and and I understand it's a short story, so you've got to fatten it up somewhere to get a feature film out of it, and that's how they chose to do it. But you can just feel it like they didn't have to have that, and it still would have been great. Hey, Stephen, did you ever read Heart Shaped Box? Uh, no. Wait, I think you'd like that story. Yeah, I think you would like. It's another Joe Hill book. Can you tell me what it's about? I think maybe I did. Read um, it. A, a retired uh, rock star um, gets sent fan mail that ends up haunting him. Yeah, he's like the he's like the last surviving member of his band, and and he gets some fan mail, and then uh, he gets haunted. And has to get that's it. right. I've heard of it. I haven't read it. I, I know that's a uh, isn't that one of Joe Hill's earlier yeah. books? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get that and let's do because oh, Joe great. Wore out the cassette tape of Heart Shaped World, but. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, that's sad for you. All right. So moving on before I get too depressed, let's um, talk do we about want to do Stranger. A film ball update? Oh, yeah. We definitely want to do it. I guess we don't have to. <laughs> I think we, we already to. know that. I think, yeah. it's important. I think it's the integrity okay, fine. of this show that we Go do. Go ahead. Do it. All right. In fifth place with. Forty-seven million dollars is Steven. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Nico is in fourth place with one hundred and one million dollars. Now, keep in mind this doesn't include the weekend numbers that we just discussed in the film ball. Man, I really, am, I, I was hoping Lightyear would pull more. No. I'm less confident in my game now. Wait, hold on. Did Disney fuck you? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what that's feeling like? They, they, they did it. They did it. They, Disney Plus. They at least it. gave him an yeah. opportunity yeah. to succeed. Yeah. Unlike exactly. You. They just yeah. like fucking you raw. Yeah, Zach got Disney oh. Plus like hell in the last block. Like they'll twice. Least, yeah. They'll at least lubricate Nico. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in third place with 364 million is me. In second place with 379 million is Nathan. And then in first place with 532. Oh! Wow. He'll just kill me. Oh, what's that? Hold on. Say it again. Say it again. I don't really hear it. Go fuck yourself. 532 million first place is Zach. Oh! There is no way anyone's catching up to Zach. That's good. No. Yeah. No, because Zach still has. Zach still has um, the fucking Minions, which is already making bank. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he still apparently so, has the bride in Easter Sunday. Steven has nothing. Steven has okay. Bullet Train, I'm, Pause of Fury, and Samaritan. 
I'm coming back, baby. <laughs> Samaritan's getting fucking pushed. Watch. Yeah, you're getting come no on one's your back. talking about that. Nathan, you're getting you come have, on your back. You have beasts mm. and three thousand years of longing. Nico has the most chance to see any kind of movement because he has Thor, Love and Thunder, Nope, and DC League of Super Pets. Okay, and I nope. have Huh? With Nope and Thor, he might actually Yeah. I think I think DC, I think League of Super Pets will be a little bit further out from the kids movies that we have now. So it will kind of get a chance to like jumpstart that family market. Yeah. Um, Thor is a Marvel movie. It's going to get. Thor's going to be banging this weekend. Yeah. 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 It's going to be. Yeah. It's, it's the thing is I'm worried about Lightyear not pulling its weight. Yeah. Lightyear hasn't even gotten like half of the stuff that it was expecting. No, it could be surprising though. It's rated R. Yeah, Nope could still be surprising. It is um, Jordan Peele and a lot of the mainstream uh, fan base likes Jordan Peele movies. So Even though that I'm new trailer is a trash one. hole. Oh, you saw it finally? I fucking saw it. Yeah, it's, it's in bad, front of, right? It's in front, of, in front of the black phone. I saw it. I still yeah, have... Yeah, first trailer is so oh good. Oh my God. It is. Sorry. <laughs> I still have a little bit of Elvis, Where the Crawdads Sing, and Vengeance. So I'm I'm pretty much expecting maybe 50 to 60 more million, but... You're going to pass me until Beast and the other one comes out. Yeah. So, Dwayne, uh, you, you and Mike don't know this, but since T- Tina took over the spreadsheet for the game... She like makes it a whole lot worse at the end because she can tell what you you paid per mm. per bid, <laughs> like the average you oh, yeah. spent for a movie, and it's yeah, fucking like, embarrassing. Uh, oh, she like, she breaks it down like <laughs> it's embarrassing. Like, okay, so right now, uh, oh God, Stevens' main contributor was the black phone, and it's just open. Before that. Uh, he had 17.7, he had 17.7% of it being uh, fire started. That's his return on investment right there. Uh, oh <laughs> How does it feel? Yeah, what a shit pile. Steven played, Steven played a really, really bad game. Yeah. This was not his best, not his best so for sure. It's, it's simple what happened. Is I, I actually can look at it and go, oh, yeah, I was right about that because people were <laughs> underestimating how good Top Gun was gonna do, and I'm like, you guys can go ahead and fucking get Doctor Strange and all that shit. I'm gonna wait to get Top Gun, and then I started focusing on the bidding and not paying attention to the numbers. And some bitch had more money left than me and fucking took well, it from me. You know, you tell Zach everything, especially when Oops. it comes to like what you're what you're thinking about movies. And oh Zach, no, I don't. I no. don't. You told you had mentioned in front of Zach that you would think Top Gun was going to do pretty good, and yeah, Zach but that was, was in front smart. of all of you guys. That yeah. son Zach, of a bitch, Zach right here. Definitely, Zach definitely pulled a Spider Man on but you. But Zach definitely was watching his numbers and watching. Hell yeah! That's a new thing. Zach Spider Man to me. Damn it! Web me right <laughs> in the asshole. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't oh. as epic as my Spider Manning, where I just full on knocked out everybody's bidding and still won. Yeah, so. Tina destroyed Nico's game with that Spider Man situation. <laughs> it was epic. And it was that an is epic what, that is the one movie that I had that made up like ninety eight percent of my total, and it caused me to win the game. It was fantastic. Wow, and I loved it. No regrets. I love it. All right, so Stranger Things. Everybody's watched Chapter 2 except Mike, and Mike doesn't care about spoilers. That's right. Um, ultimately, I, I don't think Mike would like Chapter 4 because the thing about Chapter 4, at least in its first half in particular, is it riffed heavily on Nightmare on Elm Street. It was straight up horror, and it was great. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Especially, when, like, yeah. especially when like you got that first death with Chrissy at the end of the first episode yes. that was like I turned to Nico I'm like it's finally gone back to horror and I love it yeah also exactly. especially when Freddie is actually in the show yeah he shows up as a different character which yeah. I think was fantastic casting yeah I think it's so, getting scarier because the kids who you know who were young when it started are they old. were experiencing like um steven spielberg kind of horror in their lives and now that they're getting older they're moving to the john carpenter horror of their lives fair enough 
Fair. It, I, it I wish it was a little more John Carpenter. It's pretty to me. It's pretty heavily Wes Craven right now, it which, is. which I'm okay as, with too. As they get older, though, it's also like uh, the some of the training wheels start coming off, and they're less safe. As Were they? We, well, I mean. I, I my my theory of the show is the kid like one mandate of the show has got to be the kids don't die until at least last season if at all. Yeah, yeah um, their plot but, armor is real strong, yeah. which I get. It makes sense. They are kids, and you, you don't want to do that to them. But I do. We, we came close to one. <laughs> oh yeah, Max. Season. Max was rough going. I for was. A second they there. took Max's damage at the end of the show, uh, at the yeah. end of the last episode, a lot further than what I would have expected. She did not yeah. roll a good d twenty. That's for no. sure. No. <laughs> so let me get since he wasn't here for the, our discussion of the first half of of uh, season four. Let me get Dwayne's thoughts on the first half. Um, I really like the backstory. I like the villain. Um, I, I like their commitment to keep like D and D alive in the show, like as a as a main driving force of the plot. Um, I thought it was a really strong season. Um, I think two. Looking back, two was probably my least favorite season. Uh, three had the benefit of being set at a mall, and to me, like if it's at, if it's in the eighties. And you don't have something set at the mall, you're doing it wrong. So as soon as yeah. they brought that into the storyline, I'm like, this this season's gonna work out. So yeah, four has been four of the the first part of four had me excited. I was glad we didn't have a long wait until the drop of the second half. And then getting to sit down and you know basically to see two feature length episodes was amazing. So should we talk about that for a minute? Is the second uh, or the I, second part of of season four oh, is really yeah. two feature length episodes does anybody have an issue with that yes i don't think we needed the break in between honestly um well, they, I, if it was a week them. we didn't have a choice for that break because they were still in post-production and that's why that's what happened. yeah no if, I, I think i think like the, the real question is did it have to be two hour and a half in two and a half hour episodes or could it have been three episodes or four episodes yeah. that's the three. question i'm getting to could have been three i'd have to yeah. really i'd have to go back and watch them and see if there's you know because you, you kind of still want a complete story within an episode right you do want an arc of some kind and i'm mm-hmm. yeah, i'm trying to think where that break would happen in that yeah. second episode that there's would so be many cuts logistically there was, yeah there was there was a spot i, I can't recall where it was in at the moment now but i remember thinking there were some points where they probably could have split the episode of that last one that was two and a half hours it Um, almost feels like they knew and at some point it was going to be multiple episodes but then like it's like the 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 governors got taken off the off the engine and netflix said do what you want so they just expanded them because I, I I agree with you i feel like there's spots where they could have cut them off and split them up but they see but i didn't i the way it, the last two flowed, yeah, they were longer episodes, but I liked being able to sit there and see it as like a longer episode than cut up. It, it didn't feel like it was two hours or whatever. No, I, I never once looked at my watch or was like, this no. is going a little long. Like I was, I was along for the whole I, ride uh, and, I, and enjoyed it. I did I, look at my watch. At, oh, go ahead. I definitely had a lot of moments where I'm like, cut this out, trim this down. Like it does. Okay, it has so no business. I, that's a different thing. That's yeah. a different thing, and I, well, I agree no with business you. being two and a half when I can cut thirty minutes out of it because we don't have to have a flashback every time they say my friends and it cuts us shit from like previous seasons. I'm like, I know. I don't mind those flashbacks because there's so much time between seasons, but and, and ultimately, I guess I don't mind the two long episodes because what's the fucking difference when everybody's binging it anyway? Yeah. Yeah, but exactly. the problem I have is there's a lot of things that made those episodes long that we didn't need. I Which think the apparently, one that, apparently fifth season they're going to drop it on a weekly basis instead of uh, all at once because totally and they're with that. they're yeah, going to the do that because say they're... that binging is is really unhealthy and they want to try and encourage people to get away. It keeps from it that. in the, oh, the cultural zeitgeist. Fuck that. Yeah. The reason they're doing it is because Netflix is bleeding subs and they need to keep people around. That's the <laughs> truth of it. Yeah, there's that. Too. That's the honest truth of it. Um, but like in particular the last episode there's a long block of time we spend in that gym 
with clothes donation and shit. That was yeah. so yeah. weird. Yeah. It's the, the so two long. days later. It's the, it, so long. It was, the it whole two much. days later gap. And then everybody's like, oh, by the way, Sam's in the hospital. The town's been ripped apart. Max. Yeah. Or, Max. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Max has been ripped apart. Or you get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> And, one shot, Zach. You had one shot, I, 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 and they're I, like an hour go ago. To the fucking gym and donate I, clothes, and I'm I, I like, I turned over to Tina huh? when that was happening, and I'm like, they're Return of the King ending this thing because there's so many false endings, yeah. of that episode. Because that I felt like, there's 30 like, minutes it could go. Yeah, yes, that, I, that end of like after they're out of the upside down and yeah. everything. There was a half hour left in the show at that point. Like, there's yeah. a lot yeah. of content. Left. I do have to wonder how many people driving out of Hawkins with the mm-hmm. town destroyed. Just see this pizza van pass and be like, "Who the fuck's ordering pizza?" Right. <laughs> I mean, two two <laughs> comments about that though. Two <laughs> comments about that. As much as I don't like most of that time they spend in that gym, I will say, and I know this is character set up for season five, is but that sequence, and I forget her name, the the girl uh, who's who's a lesbian. Robin. Yeah. Okay. So the time she spends with the other girl that she liked, but ends up Molly she's not a lesbian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that character. I liked how bubbly in '80s she felt. I liked that sequence, but you could have given I, me that sequence without all the other cruff around it. You know, I, isn't that I like that Uma character. Thurman's daughter. Yeah, I was yeah. About yeah. Uma to say, Thurman, he, and Ethan Hawks. Yeah, she's great. She's I liked good. her. No, I, I, liked I, her. And I liked her in that character, but I just can't get over the fact of how much they went. We need someone to be Molly Ringwald. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Was, yeah. was anyone annoyed that Max is in the hospital with her arms and legs fucking broken in a coma and her mom's nowhere to be found? Yeah, I did right? I wonder that. that. Too. That was a thought. Yeah. And also you get the parents of one of the other kids in their house, like the dad is doing what he's always doing, sitting there reading the paper. The city's ripped apart, right? The town is ripped yeah. to shreds, but they got power. People are dead. They got power. He's just chilling, reading the paper while they're getting uh, together I, some blankets. I honestly think that... Uh, what is his name? Tom or Todd or something? Yeah. Mister Wheeler yeah. is like a villain. <laughs> well, I hope so. How how is he with Mike's mom? Mike's mom is way too attractive for that guy, right? <laughs> well, I mean, that's even a plot point in season three where Mike's mom nearly cheats on yeah him with her or with the. Uh, oh, there's also a theory going around that Mike's mom is um, one sister. Yeah, is is Vecna's sister is the Alice girl from like the killed her. Mm-hmm. yeah but they also he also made it look like he killed him was killed too yeah so you don't know what's real what's not because he had the power to alter we perception. got some unreliable narrators up in here you sure do <laughs> i i like, like unreliable i remember narrators. messaging you and dalton how i felt about it yeah and then like 24 hours passed i'm like holy shit you, you know you you settle on into it then you're like Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. Why did they have to set up an amp on top of their trailer when they could just run a cable? I feel like that's that's some rivet. Run counting a cable that, fifty feet away. That's it's yeah. it ends up being some rivet counting. I don't really care about. No, uh, they're, 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 they're gonna sit their ass right on top of it. There is a bit of a rule of cool kind of thing where it feels like okay, this is an awesome scene. It's yeah. leaning into the material. We got to do that. I did wonder yeah. where they're getting electricity from. That was my yeah. Question. Like, we discussed it. Doesn't have power. I, my, well, my and was, we had a whole discussion about that because uh, our friend Dalton was like, "Well, they have a power plant," and I'm like, "Yeah, but power plants only work if people are fucking there to run them, and there's no one in the upside down but monsters." Yeah. Who's my, you know? My, my theory was extension cables going through the gate. But they show the gate and there's no <laughs> extension cable. They, they could have cut them at that point. They could have just dropped. Okay, but there is a thing, and Zach is gonna hate this, but this is the truth. What else is new? Is this show this show is a riff on E.T. and the Goonies. And if you like those two shows, you can't fucking complain about there not being power in the upside down because in the Goonies, a dude opens his jacket and a boxing glove comes out and punches somebody. And that's so, why I don't have any love for the Goonies or E.T. Good point. Oh, Are my you, God. You oh, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> this is some big revelation to you? You that. didn't. You need a, you now I'm hearing E.T. And now, and oh, now I was we never, I was never now, a fan of E.T. Now mm. we can't judge. We were supposed to trust your movie critiques. Oh. <laughs> uh, maybe I need to rewatch it, but, man, I've just never been E.T. E.T. is one of the greatest movies The answer is always. score by John Watch Goonies. 
If you don't yes. care for the Goonies, I can't imagine what you're getting out of Stranger Things. Because to me, one hundred percent agree. Yeah, better is it dialogue, really dialogue, better written characters, better <laughs> cinematography, mm-hmm. better um, musical I'm not, score. I'm not sure if you've seen my eyes roll. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in a in a marketing trick, and I don't know how I feel about it. I feel kind of like the way I felt about Fight Club after I saw it. I've really hated that movie when I saw it. And didn't grow to like it till later because yeah. of the the marketing tactic that was made at, at, about how that movie, movie ended. There was a lot of stuff out there that was being pushed up about how this was supposed to be the last season of Stranger Things. Yeah, and yeah. then and, but then you know they're like, oh, we're going to do another one. So my immediate reaction is, oh, that's desperation to get to hold on to these subs that they're losing. But then you watch this episode, and it was always planned for a fifth season so yeah, there's no, no way. way they were gonna when did that info come out that says this is the last one yeah exactly uh, yeah i think that i think that was probably like, minutes well i think that oh excuse me i think i think that was like early in development of season four and they may have gotten to the point where it's like we need to split this up i'm really going to be i don't know about concern so like this season, season four started with a time jump after season three. Six months. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's still, a, you're, when kids are growing at that age, six months is a lot. Yeah. So that's fine. But mm-hmm. next season has to start pretty much immediately. Oh, it, it's already been put out there. The next season is going to be 1989, which is a multi-year jump. <laughs> which, what the no, fuck? Wow. Yeah, wait, I've been reading but, that all over the but, place. But hmm. wait. Yeah, that was a good year. They could start immediately and then do a jump forward because th- there's going to be stuff. It'd be probably be a back and forth type thing. But, well, at that point, though, <laughs> then you take out any risk for any characters because if they're in the 1989 present and you're doing flashbacks, okay, well, they're not going to die. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how that's going to happen. All the risks. Oh, God, is but, he going to be but, lost? Or are they going to do like do like flashbacks and that's well, going to be here- the whole season? <laughs> Yeah, this is the reality, and Lost is a good example because I can't remember his name, but there was a little kid that was on Lost. Oh, I, yeah, I know, yeah. They were forced to do a time jump a little bit with Lost because he fucking sprouted between seasons. He grew a <laughs> foot, you know? And I think that's the situation that we're having with Stranger Things is they're almost forced to do something because people are growing up. Like, I mean, they look radically different funny. already. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they look uh, yeah, radically Gavin's different like the, already. The, the, the main kids are like 19 to 20 right now. Yeah. yeah. So, Nancy is 28 years old, y'all. I mean, she's, yeah. she's going mean, to is... AARP membership soon. Yeah. yeah. Right? This is getting <laughs> into like um, <laughs> Superboy on fucking small, like Smallville <laughs> yeah. when he's 35. It's like, we got to do something. So the, the time jump doesn't bother me because I feel like that's compensating for... for well, you know, and they have announced season five is going to be 2024. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which oh, is wow. stupid. No, like, what, I what literally... They is, if they've already filmed like relatively around the time that, that they were wrapping up season four, if like the immediate portion of the start of season five, like that deals with the fact that the upside down is now bleeding into the real world. Yeah. And then it time jumps a little bit into that. They might be able to work around that. And luckily now, like we said, the kids are around 19 to 20 in real age. The the aging of 1920 to like 22 is not as big as going any sort of two year range in the teens. Yeah. So, yeah. From like 13 to 15 or 13 to 16 yeah. is a big jump. Yeah. But it also depends on the actor, too. Some people just act. Mm-hmm. Some people age, you know, immensely during that time period. And yeah. some people can still play high school students. So, mm-hmm. like, really um, is it not Mike, Will? Oh, gosh, I've forgotten their names. Um, Noah. The bas- Noah. The basketball player. Jason. Oh. Um, Lucas. 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 That's it, Lucas. Where, where Dustin still looks young, Lucas is looking like a full-grown-ass man. I mean, yeah, fucking Erica sure. still looks like a middle school student, and she's, like, in real life, she's, like, I think she's 20. almost drinking age. She's 15. Erica? Oh, I thought she was almost I actually 15. looked this up earlier. She's uh, 15. Erica is the age the bo- all the, the main kids should be right now. Yeah. So, um, but no, I I think, honestly, I think of the, the main ones, Will looks the oldest to me. because he For sure. He, because he's the one that they're they're really going through extents to make him dress and have the same haircut as he did yeah. in season one. I was about to say it's that bowl haircut. But it is that bowl haircut. It's like this is an adult that you're putting in a bowl haircut, and it shows. <laughs> so that's one thing that kind of bothered me. Uh, is this series kind of started 
with Mike and Will in a lot of ways. And to me, as of the ending of this season, they are the most boring characters. They made this whole um the Duffer Brothers confirmed earlier today that season five will focus almost mm-hmm. not entirely, but like Will would be the main driving force of season five. And and they set that up. They did set yeah. that up. Um and his whole thing, this thing they're building um with him and his you know his secret love of mike i guess uh, I, i'm a, like i'm fine with that story but it just came off so melodramatic like it was so ham-fisted you know that whole part where you're the heart you're the heart i wanted to just punch him in the face i i, <laughs> I fucking it was, hated it. it it was ham-fisted i i will say this though um while i think their road trip was the least interesting of the multi-divergent storylines in the season. I didn't actively hate it as much as I was super annoyed with like with Mike in season three and two. Like yeah this season is the most well-rounded in the fact that even the most boring of of the side plots wasn't actively annoying to me. And I'm thankful for that. I will say, though, with the whole Will and the melodramatic and, like, coming of himself or trying to discover himself, like, if as a gay kid, when I was a teenager and I wasn't out or I wasn't comfortable really being myself, things were felt dramatic like that. Like, you expressed yourself very weird like that. Even into my early Mm -hmm. 20s, it was very... I mean, when I came out, I was like, oh, I'm bi... And it was like a big deal to even try to come out and stuff like that. So, and then and you weren't imagine, by, and then imagine, later on, well, you imagine had being in the eighties too, like being yeah. in the eighties yeah. and being gay. Like I think it was very representative, especially once the AIDS yeah. pandemic hit. Like, well, okay, fair enough with that. But the other problem is, is they would have this these sequences where they would Mike and Will would have this interaction. And Will would just basically bust out crying while they're literally this close to each other. There's well, no yeah. fucking way that you didn't notice. Well, I mean, yeah, I, just, eh, I Mike's, remember Mike's being a teenage a, boy. They're but, oblivious. But also, I get it. I but, get it. But it just but didn't. Also, it, it didn't ring it, for me. Somehow. It would make sense, especially since they haven't had really a friendship, especially since he came back from the Upside Down after the first season. Like their relationship had been building of strain for a while. Especially when Eleven popped in season two and started taking Mike's all Mike's attention, Will's mm. losing his best friend and also someone he's now physically, sexually attracted to. Like, I mean, I, I'll concede it to you, but I just feel like like Lucas, for example, and Max, like the Lucas Max thing. Um, I, I feel like they really it it it's less on the actors and more on the creators because they just move focus. You know, it's like, let's focus on all the side characters, but oh, wait, here's 45 seconds. Let's wedge in Will and Mike and make sure you still remember them. Now let's go back to the side <laughs> characters we're following. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We built up Eddie. I guess Eddie is his name. No, I knew from the minute I saw him, he was a red shirt. There was no question. This guy <laughs> was yeah. supposedly, supposedly yeah. people are saying he's going to come back in season five. As a and you know what? You. Fuck that. Fuck that. No, <laughs> yeah. it, it, I no, think, it, that's I think a he'll line. probably come back in the same way that Billy's actor came back in like these visions or flashbacks or something. He needs to be I gone love, like the red haired chick from season not, one. He's not fucking it, dead. Not if it lines up with like <laughs> a uh-uh. D&D. But they <laughs> also set it up. They set it up though. Oh. If, if L can save Max <laughs> and restart Max. Why that is a serious why, hole you why don't want to go down. Why why can't <laughs> one why can't number one do the same with Eddie and turn him into a if they do that? I'm gonna get up in my own room and walk out, even though no one's here watching yeah, with I, me. I, I, I don't no. think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna do that. Uh, it doesn't it, it, it I don't know, it's that, that doesn't jive right. Uh, it, and I say right. all that having really liked that character. I like Eddie. He reminded me of a lot of the friends I had. He yeah. reminded me of the little metalhead friends I had when I was in school. You well, know, what I really, what I really liked about him is, you know, he, he kind of the impression I got from him at the beginning was he was kind of this dirtbag who 
you know, kind of had to hang around the younger kids because he, he couldn't find anybody who really fit for him. Uh, mm -hmm. But then you find out like he really, like he really cares about this group. Like th that group of friends means a lot to him. He was training up Dustin to like kind of take his place in the future. And I was like, I, I really left the series loving that character. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely seems to me like, uh, like he, he likes this group a lot and that's kind of what has kept him here in. It, it, oh, I think, did they freeze? Yeah, they froze. Um, yeah, I think he's happy yeah. that there is. There he is. <laughs> oh. So I, <laughs> I have a theory about, um, or at least my gut instinct is Max is going to be pretty much in the hospital the entirety of season five. And the only way she's going to get revived or wake up from her coma is when they defeat Vecna. Because I think her soul's trapped in Vecna. Yeah, I agree. So I think that could be a thing because it was set up with Eleven kind of going and looking for her in in the within her brain. All that, or and there's one line that Vecna says everything. early on is he keeps everybody that he kills, he keeps a part of them with him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So it, in our previous discussion about the first block, you remember the thing that bothered me the most uh, about that block, having really liked it for the most part was the one big exposition scene where he had to explain his dastardly plan. Yeah. yeah. You know what pissed me off is in the second block <laughs> is him as Vecna did the same fucking thing all over again. <laughs> it just, I don't understand why Look, we have to have these James Bond moments. Villain's got to expose it. Just, <laughs> yeah. the plan. I've already won. Because I've already won, I'm going to explain my plan. And then I mean, I, if, once if, I if transform I, from oh, a human to a monster, let me explain it again. Yeah. If I if I had to be deformed into a monster like that, I am gonna monologue because I've heard <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Gonna shoot, so, shoot, don't talk. That's true. Is anybody else listening to the Kate Bush song now? Oh, oh yeah. Maybe because it shows uh, up on no, my YouTube feed now. Yeah. So the top three songs on TikTok right now when I'm scrolling through my For You page is Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill. Yep. Uh, now <laughs> ma uh, uh, Master Puppets. And? And <laughs> Chrissy, wake up. I don't <laughs> like this. Chrissy, wake up. That's so funny. Hey, hello. So Zach and I were actually talking about this. You could say what you want about Stranger Things, but man, they do a good job with their soundtracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing to do 80 soundtracks, but they're not going to all the typical stuff. I, which I is will say, I'm curious about um, the, the return of Running Up the Hill as the hero song at the end of the, of the, of the last episode. I wonder if that was the intention or when it blew up when the first half opened it was like all right we have to remix this scene that's got to be the hero song okay so i did see an interview with um the the duffer brothers talking about it and they actually went to her to talk about the song before they ever started production apparently yeah because kate uh, bush is very particular on her song yes being used they had media. to tell her the entire story the entire arc and sit down with her and explain it out before she would sign off on it so I think apparently that was she was a planned. fan of the show, so she mm -hmm. was on board pretty much from the time the uh, meeting was scheduled. She was like, "Yes." So, all right, I guess we've gone on uh, long enough. Let's go around and get final thoughts. Dwayne, what's your final thoughts about the the series and the season so far? I will never be able to hear that Kate Bush song without thinking about that scene of Max running out of the the upside down. <laughs> it, it's become one of those songs that's going to. Um, just be locked, uh, intertwined with with the medium that I saw it in. I feel the same way, this this is kind of going back a lot, but I feel the same way about Boston's More Than a Feeling because it's used in a clip and she's having a baby and I can never hear that song without thinking about that scene. So uh, so one, that's amazing. Uh, two, I am uh, a really fun season, um, probably my second favorite overall and looking forward to season five. Nathan? Hands down. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I had a cough, so I was muted. Cool video. Um, so, hands oh. down, it's Netflix's best show. 
I mean, it's the only thing probably keeping subscribers. I really enjoyed season four. I don't think we really needed the break in between. I didn't mind how long the episodes were. I actually enjoyed the longer episodes because there was no dull moments for me. Um, and I really appreciate the only thing I wish would happen is they would start killing off some of the main characters. Um, I agree with that. Okay. I would kill Dustin. I mean, they could even kill, they could even could have killed Will's older brother. I yes, don't care. John Lincoln, oh, I'm John Lincoln can die. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah. I will say if Steve died, it's like that's the best character in the show. I don't have a reason to watch his show anymore. Well, and actually, <laughs> I was watching some interview too. Steve was actually wasn't even supposed to make it past season one, but yeah, he was supposed to die in the house when the demigorgons chasing him and the kids. Yeah. So I yeah. see I've seen multiple things because I also saw the Duffer brothers say it's like, yeah, we kind of also intended Steve to be the character that Billy was in season two. So interesting. They definitely had different plans for Steve. Yeah. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed the season. Um, I just wish we didn't have to wait in between. <laughs> Zach. After part two, I am still very positive for this season. But these cracks really need to get sealed. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what season especially five for. the last 40 minutes of of the last episode. I fucking hate you. It uh, was Tina. It was her fault. I know. Uh, the last 40 minutes, like the writing just nosedived. Um, and, and that's something that I really do want to see addressed. But I'm, I'm, you know, if, if outside that door, you're like, hey, I got season five of Stranger Things. You want to see? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yes, I do. Um, I still think the running up the hill sequence in was episode four is probably the finest moment of Stranger Things as a whole. Fair enough. (laughs) Tina? Um, Season four, the first half especially, solidified it as my first or second favorite. I keep going back and forth between season one just because that's the foundation. That's the baby. It's the foundation. Um, Oh, sorry. Fuck season two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm I'm intrigued to see, especially now that I mean they did essentially lose. It's almost like the Empire Strikes Back uh, effect uh, and Infinity War effect. They did lose. They didn't stop Vecna, and now everything's gone to shit. So I am hopeful that season five will be like Endgame and uh, return to where. You know, you have that satisfaction, that gratification of watching these people's stories come to a head um, after they've been knocked down. Um, And Jonathan can die. Nancy needs to drop his ass and either hook up with Robin or Steve (laughs) or both. Not too terribly picky. Um, (laughs) And... Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to season five. I just wish they would not have it. I really don't want there to be a time skip. Sorry. I don't think it's going to be what you all are thinking it's going to be. But I can we also say they did a really good job. One, Vecna was scary, but they did a really good job with the Jason character. Um, yeah. He was oh, yeah. scary. Like oh, yeah. that yeah, was he, scary. He was he was a truly terrifying. Like he yeah. was the yeah. realistically terrifying. Yeah, the, the moment he was given the speech at the pep rally yeah. before any shit goes down, and I'm like, yeah. oh, this guy is bad news. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't even really talk about it, but I'm a sucker for the satanic panic thing because I remember that as a kid myself <laughs> and yep. being a fan of all the shit that they said was satanic. Yeah. Um, so anytime that's represented in, in a movie or TV show. Well, that and the it. fact that they based Eddie off of um, like an actual case. Uh, I forget the first name, but Eccles from Memphis. Yeah, Damien uh, Eccles. They, yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Like that, I think that's a great way of honoring how like fucked up people were persecuted during the satanic panic. Just because mm-hmm. you're a metalhead doesn't mean you're a Satanist. Like, fuck exactly. off. So. And just because you're a saint, this doesn't mean you're a metalhead. Yeah, exactly. that's true. Maybe you, maybe you just like Kate Bush. <laughs> you just might like Kate Bush. Uh, unpopular opinion. Hmm. I did not like his death scene. It felt so hmm. hands I mean, off. It's like, okay, bye. 
There was no I mean, satisfaction to it. Uh, there was a lot of satisfaction to it. All right. Well, some <laughs> force just melts him in half. Yes. Burn, bitch. Personal. No, it feels like he was being burnt at the stake because he was trying to burn people at the stake. But he wasn't at a stake, nor was he being burned. See, now, now I just want a ribeye. Mm. Ooh. Uh, yeah, sounds good. All right, Nico, yeah. your final thoughts? I liked it. I, I, I'm I, on Tina's bandwagon of I don't know if I like this his first or second best season because it has been a while since I've, I've seen season one. Again, yeah, I'm having but, to rewatch season one. But it mm-hmm. feels like this does a lot of what season one did up upping the ante uh especially like i think dd has done way better in this season too it was like that that first episode where they were playing dd fantastic i love it yeah um, it's pretty solid but but yeah i i like how the development of a lot of the characters went i think they handled the diverging plot lines better like i said earlier none of them were particularly annoying they were just ones like i don't care as much about this but i wasn't put off by the fact that it was there uh, I, I thought we didn't even really go into the the Russia storyline, which is so radically different, but they were still able to tie it back in to have an impact with the overall Vecna big bad guy story. And, and I mm-hmm. thought that worked pretty well. Um, I am really looking forward to season five. And I am, this is definitely uh, a bright spot. Uh, <laughs> also, hold on. Yeah. You okay. actually reminded me. Also, the fact that Vecna is the one who shaped the mind flayer like yeah. all right yeah. okay i yeah. like how they're they're tying all the seasons together into a nice story arc yeah yeah sure. and i think yeah. they're doing a really good job uh, of, of of doing that and, and tying these villains together at the end when we learn a bit more about what that the how Vecna came to be yeah. so I, I am looking forward to the conclusion of the story they did kind of create a plot hole all right, you're gonna drag this out. No, no, real quick. So in season two, we had what was it, eight? <laughs> show That's what Zach is for. We had eight show up and be but, like, "Hi, I have powers too." And then in all these flashbacks, they show her a not there and b that everyone fucking died. Because but you also know you sucks. know her power, but you know what her power was was to make people forget and stuff like that. So there is Actually, theories. There, 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 there is theories that she may be tied into <laughs> season five. So we I, would say, I hope not. I would say, I I would say this I though. It, 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 unfortunately, back up Zach here. Um, oh God! W- when we see the other, when we see everybody else in the in the in the science lab, none of the other kids are really shown having different powers. They're they're really shown at having moderately different levels of the same kind of like uh, telekinetic abilities that, True. that they all have because they're yeah. doing the same but, testing. But you're also seeing different things. Like we saw Vecna, obviously, number one was the first, and he used his blood to kind of alter and play around and do stuff. But we saw different powers of L, too, with Max and all that. So, But, but that, that seems like an, uh, a growth of her abilities. But the kids all in the, in the lab have all basically... The same telekinetic, telekinetic ability. Whereas yes. you, you don't see like like you talked about with eight. Eight has the ability to make people forget things. Not telekinesis. She has a completely different power set. And but, in the I mean, lab, they're training them to all have the same power set. But then yeah. Vecna had the power to cause visions or bring up visions, alternate reality visions to people. So it's like... I think we'd, we'd have to look at how, and, and this would have to be told through um, Eight's path after the lab of yeah, Elle's developing her powers. So how did Eight develop her powers? I, I think it's oh, just they, the writers so. just wrote themselves into a corner and just said, fuck it. That's no, what I, 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 yeah, no, I, I think. I, 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 I think it's going to be answered in five, season I think, five. I think, uh, I, well, well, I think it could. I think it could be one. They all actually do have the same mental powers. And then eventually L could also make people forget things. I think. Because it's all. Tele, all telepathic abilities. I think, and, and I would hate that because it becomes too much. She's OP at that point. It's yep. too much. I think yep. Eddie is number ten for one simple reason. No, I because know. when you see ten, when you see Brenner go to talk to ten to see, like, hey, you ready to go do some training? He has a magic eight ball, and what's in the magic eight ball? A dice. No. And what does Eddie oh play? No. 
Mm, no, no, that. that, that's a one hundred percent trolling. I don't want that. Eddie is dead. But, but, Eddie is all, dead. All, Eddie's all, dead. All, all that theory crafting aside, I really enjoyed the season. It was a fun season. So I'm looking forward. Yeah, to it was a fun season. Okay, so here for me, like, and, and we talked about this a lot. I was raving about the first three fourths, the first chapter of this, because to me it was second best to, to season one. It remains second best to season one because for me the comeback, these last few episodes, right down were fine. They, it became fine for me, like it was fine. Whereas the first half was freaking great. Like yeah. I was riveted. The second half, okay, it's fine. It's it's not bad, but it's not like, holy cow, I'm blown away anymore. It's just like fine. And you know, we didn't even talk about Argyle. So has anybody else fucking seen Days and Confused? I'm sorry. Yeah. Argyle yeah. is yeah. legit a 100% carbon copy of a character on Days and Confused, all the way down to his stoner uh, attitude and his hair. He's like can legit. A, uh, can I get into a marketing tie-in? What's that? Um, has, has anybody actually bought the uh, Walmart Things exclusive pizza. Stranger Things surfers pizzas? Uh-huh. They're, thing. They're bad. <laughs> I would imagine. You, you, you the boys... Like, so we we I had uh, I ran a uh, I started Curse of Strahd with the boys and one of their friends and Nico, and specifically requested by the boys was the Stranger Things pizza. So I got both of the Supreme and the pineapple jalapeno. The, that's the one that like Argyle makes for them in the last episode. It's like here's hot, ha- yeah. ha- you know, ha- and it's like that was an extra point for me because you're right, boy. Pineapple is good on a pizza. Fuck all you. Try pizza. before you deny. Oh, that, that, that's that's right. Right. It is. Exactly. It is. It is very good on a pizza. I don't no. like pineapple. No. Sweet and salty, baby. Sweet and salty. Again. So the other Surprising. other issue, you know, I've, I have a lot of little minor issues. I do agree with what Tina said is I like that it ends on a loss. I love that. That's dark, you know. Um, but I love me some wine on a rider. I love Joyce. And Joyce disappears from the fucking show <laughs> in the second like it's like what happened to joyce joyce she was so the celluloid she left the celluloid she was so good in the first half of it the whole russia story you reference and then we come back and we get like two feature length films and we've got no joyce like where, where's joyce you know so making out with it, hopper it, in the church yeah <laughs> okay good for, okay that's all right good for her um well, generally that. though i really i really did like it i was happy to actually have something that uh is on netflix that i like again because i don't like most of their stuff but this was good and because it, of the unevenness for me of the first half of season four being so great and the second half being just okay season one remains better i think season one is a complete package if you only ever watch season one you'd You're be good. fine you're good. It ends great. It's got a John Carpenter style ending, a little bit dark. It's great. Um, whereas this one is a little less even. But I, I do want to see how it ends, but I do want it to freaking be over. We need to finish with season five. It's, it's yeah. It's oh, it is. Time. It's gonna be over season five. Ah, that's what they said about season four, too. Damn it. No. Um, well, here's anyway. the thing. If season five is not the end, we're getting like a I already know, like some of the characters say that they're moving on after season five like noah who plays will is wanting to go to college and he's like i'm not putting my schooling before the film so and some like, of these actors are pretty stand out like yeah. i will say that while i feel like for me will and mike got shafted they're like their stuff was so wedged in the side characters that were really good like max and lucas these are good actors, especially yeah. Max. Yeah. Max is going to do stuff. Sadie. And be ready yeah. to do stuff. Yeah. You know, she's a fantastic actor. Mm-hmm. I mean, I so, loved her in the uh, Fear Street series that Netflix did too. So, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen that one. Um, but at least it, it's cool. It gave us something to talk about. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. This week, there's some physical media things that you can pick up. Oh. If you choose to, everything everywhere all at once is out. And boy, that has been a debacle for people trying to get that Walmart exclusive. Um, <laughs> I saw your TikTok on that. It's like, yeah, why? Would, right? Why? It's just cardboard. It's just a cheap ass slip cover. Who gives a shit? Right? I wasn't even going to buy it. And then Ada went to Best Buy and bought it anyway. So now, now we have it. I was, I was going to wait for that special edition. Um, Mike, I know you haven't seen it. You need to make time please, to see. Please, yes, that, that, please. Yes, that, that, that's on the list. I have heard that is fucking outstanding. It is. But don't start it late. 
because you got to not be tired for it because it's fast paced and it's it, like it's two hours and nineteen minutes and it doesn't waste a single it, one I, of I, it. I, a time travel movie that actually makes sense. That's well, that's it happened. it really is the multiverse of madness. It, yes, <laughs> yeah, um, but it's the it's one of two movies that I came out of like feeling complete joy in my heart after watching it this year so i've that's got a, really... i've got a week of vacation coming up so that's that's on the list oh, there you man, go it's so awesome good. good for you that you're gonna you're gonna love that so that's out in a bunch in well not a bunch it's out in a few different copies it's like i, a standard I, I have made arrangements it's 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 available <laughs> 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 all right downton abbey is uh, a new era is out in a, a standard edition in a 4k uh spoilers i fucking hated this movie it actually made me mad i walked out of the theater mad at this fucking movie oh push that 100 bitch oh so mad all right uh edge of tomorrow is out in a 4k that steelbook sold out in 15 minutes i couldn't get it oak jaw is out in a 4k the virgin suicides is out in a 4k i'm probably going to get this during the criterion sale that's happening right now if you can find it oh i'll find it i used to have that movie but then my sister stole it (laughs) it's it's good it's a really good i like that movie yeah memory is out and the hunted if you haven't seen the hunted um it is um benito del toro and tommy, tommy jones. jones oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, and it's a uh, william Friedkin directed and it has one of the most violent oh. fight scenes it's been put on celluloid it's freaking oh. great oh that it I've is got to see that. brutal that's uh, and it's it. yeah it's super cheap too it's like 13 bucks um I, i'll be getting that at some point from paramount paramount uh, Nico, did you do you have any uh, comic recommendations this week? So yeah, I, I'll go over a recommendation. If you watched Obi Wan Kenobi, oh, we didn't Disney get to Obi Wan. I, I, yeah, I can touch on that for a moment, and you yeah, were touch on that too. you were either wanting more because it's really good, or wanting more because you were let down, like some people. Um, oh, spoilers. Nico didn't you, like it. <laughs> I would recommend the 2017-2018 uh, Darth Vader run from Charles Soule. And I forget the artist's name. Uh, it's a Marvel book. It's 25 issues. It's on Marvel Unlimited. So if you subscribe there, you can read all of it there. Um, it's 25 issues of Vader about immediately after Revenge of the Sith. It's like you, he is brand new Vader at this point. But it's really good. It goes over him making his new lightsaber, uh, tracking down the Sith. Uh, we're the Grand Inquisitors. A lot of them are in that uh, that storyline. Uh, him making his base on Mustafar on the planet. It covers all that stuff. And it's really good. Like It's, it's top That's quality cool. Vader. Um, okay, I can talk about Obi-Wan real quick. Yeah, because I, I only watched the first liked, two. I want to hear your thoughts. I would have liked that ending fight between Vader and Obi-Wan a lot more if one, Obi-Wan was hurt at the end. Like uh, it, it ends and uh, Vader gets hurt to a point where- like, Oh, his spoilers mask, for Obi-Wan, by the way. Yeah, spoilers. Vader gets yeah. hurt to where his mask is exposed. You can see Hayden Christensen makeup job to, to you know look scarred out. And that's good. I think that was fine. That was, that was well done. Plus he's um, a sucker for helmet damage. Yeah, I love helmet damage. That's the best. If you can see through the helmet, that's awesome. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's um, uh, I think they did that really well, and they did a good job going back and forth between Hayden's voice and and James Earl Jones's voice. Um, but Obi Wan walked away. Like Obi Wan, basically, the fight basically happens. So Obi Wan saying like, "I'm sorry, I failed you," and Vader goes, "You didn't kill Anakin. I killed Anakin." And so Obi Wan goes, "Oh, okay, bye," walks sure. away. And it's like, if, if they had both gotten out just by the skin of their teeth, I would have been okay. But it, but still, it, but I would think at this point, it, it, where Obi-Wan is facing Vader, and Vader goes, Anakin's dead. I did it. I am pure Sith evil. Obi-Wan, as a Jedi Knight, should immediately just go, it's like, all right, I have to kill you now because this is my job. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel bad. There's going to be remorse, but this is for the greater good but he, he walks away that, that pissed me off how could they yeah. how could he keep uh, how could they keep the uh uh the storyline though with the you when i last saw you i was the learner or i was the learner and you were the master if if oh because he does beat be vader up, 
Yeah, because he still beats Vader. He still I, I guess I, I, ass I, I, I'm, fi- I'm fine that he beats Vader. I don't like that he walks away. I think that if Vader, if like there was Imperial backup that just showed up at that time and Obi-Wan had to leave, I would have bought it. But no, he got away too easy. And so let two, me ask you this. Let me I, I want to do one more thing on the fight. Okay, it was so badly shot. It was it like was watching terrible. Cloverfield. That's how shaky it was the shaky camp camp. Camp. I'm not the, surprised. The choreography in the fight was amazing. I thought I thought, thought like, the, the actual fight work looked great. And the fact that they kept shaking the camera during the damn fight the whole time pissed me so <laughs> off. I was Sounds watching like a, that. I was watching a <laughs> compilation video of, of so like Zach. Yeah, I was watching a compilation video of different like Vader fights with uh with obi-wan like uh, like them fighting in in episode three and then them fighting in this one and i'm like oh man that fight in episode three actually looks good because the camera is steady um and it's it's just there was really cool force work during the fight too like we the the way they use their force powers in addition to fighting with lightsabers makes it probably one of the best jedi sith fights but they shot it badly and it's just so annoying well okay so here's my question though like, I was so annoyed by the series that I dipped after two episodes. I mean, other than the fight, is it actually good? I think it's okay. I think the... That's what I was afraid of. Yeah, I, I like I said, uh, my my wait. main issues with it are... Are you telling me that Disney wait, botched another thing? Let him <laughs> my main issues are the ones I just talked about. And, and the, okay. what is should be the culmination of this show is that... Oh, and... and um. The, the actual ending bit with the cameo appearance that we get is just kind of like, why the hell is this here? Um, I I think episode five, the, the one before this, uh, was good. The, I think the one where Vader fought Reva was really good. Um, but otherwise, like the, the ending of this one was kind of a letdown. And uh, what was the other thing? Uh, one thing I thought about while watching the ending of Stranger Things, while watching Stranger Things, going kind of back and forth between that and obi-wan is you know what i appreciate about stranger things shooting on locations yeah Yeah, yeah that's something that we don't get to see with a lot of streaming shit these days and it's a super annoying thing and it's weird because it's like i i mean disney's got money disney could make star wars look good but everything is on the same like 3d green screen set instead of being in an actual desert area where they could actually film some of this stuff and and it's just annoying whereas stranger things even though it's like it's all shot in pretty much atlanta uh or, or georgia and stuff but it's still outside and it's in places and they went to a desert to film scenes at a store that goes into the ground it's like Everything looks good in Stranger Things. And it's like, Disney, come on. And that's it. I'm done. There you go. <laughs> We're about two hours into this. Yeah, let's wrap this baby up. Uh, Mike and Dwayne, we've missed you guys. It's so good for you guys to be back on here. Yeah. Thumb ball. Nice. Just it was good fun. to be part of the show. Yeah. Thumb ball. Just saying. Yep. So uh, we'll let you guys start first since you're not on here as much. Mike, I know you don't have much of a, of a social media presence. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Dwayne, what about you? You got something? Yeah, so let's see. It's about nine more days before the start of Age of Empires 4 Season 2. So uh, if you want to win at a game of Age of Empires, come find me on Xbox Live, drworm75. That's Dr. Worm 75 and uh, uh, Nico, Tina, and Nathan, uh, you guys have not actually attended a game night with us, but if you take a look at what's happening behind Dwayne right now, you'll see when we play at his yeah. house what it looks like. <laughs> it's crazy. The library. Uh, Mike, do you have anything it's like going that you to want to promote, sir? In a movie. <laughs> you don't have anything, do you, Mike? Oh, hell no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Nathan. You can find me on Instagram, Nate underscore R underscore seven zero, or you can find me on Dead by Daylight, Nate seventy four seven one. And then also, I'm about to be watching Big Brother. It premiered tonight. So, oh, all right, Zachy boy. You can find me on. Uh, Discord. I always put you on the scene. 
<laughs> I'm a dangerous mute lunatic. You can also find me on uh, five, six, seven years later. He's still on the spot. Letterboxed. <laughs> I'm Master Z91. On Letterboxed. On Letterboxed. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Tina? You can find me on most major social media as Cheddar Popper. That is C H E D R P O P P R. And always on the lookout for the.shadow.pupper on Instagram to keep up with the pup. Nico? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Letterboxd under the screen, N-I-K-O-S-C-R-E-A-M, and also posting at the.shadow.pupper. New photo out today. Nice. So you can find me on Letterbox under a culture smash. I'm trying to be pretty diligent about posting as I do the Pushing 100 project. Every time I, I see movies, I, I usually put something up the same day. Um, you can find me OTS uh, movies on TikTok, Off the Shelf Movie Night on YouTube. And also, if you look up Twin Flicks, it's a really good um, physical media and movie uh, YouTube channel. They had me as a guest on their uh, physical media coast to coast show that went live this morning that was pretty cool neat we'll see everybody next week bye everybody bye everybody see ya Get smashed, get smashed, get smashed, get smashed with the culture smash cast. With the culture smash cast, get smashed.